every now and again I just hear a sort of a sucking noise and then look around and there's just a huge wave there but she's rising and falling with them and they're not breaking over her so they just look scary a lot of traffic around here a huge amount of fishing boats there's like four or five within a couple of miles and, and a large tanker has just crossed in front of me as well but hopefully once I get by these yeah there's going to be traffic for the next good few hours but um, yeah hopefully it'll get a bit more reasonable fishing boat to find myself in just past that guy but you can see there's another heading straight for me so yeah more to do yeah I avoided him earlier so closest point of approach of uh, about three quarters of a mile in 11 minutes so 11 minutes and this should be almost uh, should be almost out of it so luckily that last lad seems to have altered course to starboard to um, so very shortly I'll be able to bear away and get myself under a bit less pressure. I'm actually loving this apart from the worry about the rig and the sails and the ropes chafing but if it all works out it'll be a real confidence builder um, and I'll, I'll, I'm so impressed with the boat so far she's really really held up very well but it's not exactly the conditions I thought I was getting myself in for but you never know so yeah I'm going through phases of loving it and phases of being scared and phases of being happy to take each sort of hour as it comes and phases of just wanting to be there now you know I think this is the hardest thing about single handing so far for me is, is it's just not being able to talk to somebody <laughs> just to share anxiety and uh, come through it together you know um, you have to just come through it on your own but it'll be rewarding for that as well okay take rest of my way this is my cockpit salute or safety solution for uh, for using the lines to the Aries while uh, behind the washboards the wind is definitely lightening which is amazing the waves are building though which is not amazing wow it's a big wave anything. Luckily it's just going to pick us up and drop us down into the next trough. Well done Zephira. Well this is making me feel like I need to toughen up. There's an Imoka boat over there also a solo sailor flying a spinny downwind or a uh, code zero and asymmetric I don't know it's colorful anyway so <laughs> here's me thinking it was windy but obviously not so it's nice to know I'm not the only single-handed sailor out here um, and it's a serious sailor there so I found myself in the middle of a race again here um, these are all solo uh, ocean racing yachts uh, so oh yeah, all look like big high performance racing yachts. Um, I think possibly French. You can see this guy just show up on the camera, but he's just off there again, big full mainsail and asymmetric spinnaker and I don't know how they do it. Like I'm reefed down to within an inch of my life and I feel like I'm hanging on for bare life. It's all in a day's work for these lads, but it must be so exhausting. It's kind of cool because I'm like 140 miles from the nearest land or 130. It's 
it's still pretty windy. This is a little bit less sting in it and not broaching as much. Um, the waves are a little bit smaller and less uniform. They're just kind of broken up now. So it's been a while since I've really felt like one caught me. I've mostly spent the day below just pottering around and trying to get some rest where possible. Um, hopefully I'll grab an hour of sleep tonight and 15 minute bits and pieces here and there um, and then continue that into tomorrow. I feel pretty good given that I'm awake since yesterday morning. 24 hours just run. Um, 125 miles which is pretty, pretty I mean pretty decent 124 miles um, yeah that's a good a good start uh, it might be the quickest 24 hours I log in a while and especially considering the first seven and a half hours were engine leaving uh, leaving Baltimore such an amazing wee boat she just takes it all in her stride <sighs> Just have to learn to do the same. Right, well, let that be out there, and we'll be in here. Burr. So, literally by the minute, the pressure is going up, and it's gotten much, much, much colder. So, I think the cold front has passed over from this uh, kind of relatively shallow low um, that's been over um, the, the north of Biscay for the last uh, day. So cold front passing over would explain the current rain and the current cold and um, hopefully, hopefully we'll get lighter winds in the aftermath of it. That should be the end of this depression, or should hurl the end of it anyway. It's wild enough out there still. Good morning. So it's our second morning at sea, and early this morning we finally crossed the continental shelf and sailed into deeper water. So we've been sailing for the last day and a half in uh, about 100 meters of water south of Ireland um, and now we've just crossed into the open ocean proper and we've got about 2,000 meters now under the under the keel so the wind yesterday was kind of crazy today the situation is much better still plenty strong enough it's steady five uh, occasionally gusting six the deeper water seems to have settled the waves down a lot more or, or possibly the less wind has settled the waves down. They're, they're still very big but they're much more regular, they're not breaking. I'm not worried that the cockpit will get take a wave into it or yeah, everything, everything is just a lot calmer and better. Kind of a great day but yeah, very, very excited to be on the open ocean and uh, kind of almost more important from a sanity perspective there's no boats here compared to like um, if I zoom in on this like at that scale prior to crossing the um, into deeper water there would have been three or four boats almost all the time sometimes six or seven but now I have like basically my entire range of AIS and radar to myself. I'm not picking up any boats at all, which is just absolutely wonderful. So it means I'll be able to get a bit more sleep this morning. So yeah, 6.45 in the morning, have a bit of breakfast, tidy up because yesterday a lot of the, <laughs> a lot of the jobs did not get done because of the state of the, uh, the sea. So yeah, catch up on a few boat related tasks, make sure everything is ship shape. Um, about a third of the way into the journey, we've come about 170 miles and 525, and yeah, about 350 miles left to run, and all of it now in deep water until you know approaching uh, Finisterre area. Some sort of a big whale out here. 
It's an orca like fin. Could be a pilot whale. I hope it's a pilot whale. So I'm sure this doesn't come out on camera, but the ocean is definitely a different color. It's a much bluer kind of a blue and there's a lovely big ocean swell coming in. It's very comfortable. I feel like I'm, I'm sailing on an ocean for the first time single-handed, which is really, really wonderful. I think I'm about 250 miles from the nearest land in almost all directions at this stage. Still haven't shaken out the reefs, even though, as you can see, it's, uh, it's not blowing particularly hard, but just for I'm trying to catch up on sleep at the minute. And there's no boats around, no ships. And she's sailing the course nicely on her, on her own. I'm kind of in the middle of nowhere here now. Um, so I might as well just stay comfortable at full Genoa out and fully reef main. This is my wing, and wing on wing arrangement I likely be using in the trade winds. Probably a, a fairly heavily reef main most of the time to not be having to worry about reefing it with squalls and then I can just roll in and out the headsail as, as appropriate for the weather. So really wonderful sailing conditions now. I'm downwind, beautiful blue water, nice force. Three or four behind me, driving me along at about five knots. Wing on wing. Everything behaving itself pretty well. I haven't shaken the last reef out of the main just because I'm going to keep it in there in case it goes up overnight, but I, I don't think it will. I'm going five knots anyway, so it's fine. And the sun's out, which will help us recharge the batteries a bit. So around uh, 10 p.m. tonight, all going well, we should be halfway. Got a fishing line out, um, but I suspect there's a reason there's no fishing boats around this area. So it's calm enough to cook something kind of proper this evening. Um, yesterday I just had a sort of a boil in the bag kind of thing because it was bouncing all over the place. And, uh, so when I say proper, it's not really proper because I did a pretty woeful shop. So all I really have is onions as a veg and chorizo as meat. So. I'm going to put those with a peanut satay sauce um, with apricots and mixed nuts and I'm going to serve it over rice and we'll see what that's like. So it's actually incredibly kind of delicious. The, um, the nuts and the chorizo and uh, the onions all go really nicely with the satay sauce and that's exactly what I felt like. So I don't know if this has ever been cooked anywhere on the surface of the earth before but it's very unlikely it's ever been cooked here in the middle of the Bay of Biscay. Delicious. Mm -hmm. 